You ask, I make a video about it. That's how it works here. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get this nostalgic cinematic look. It's like my own interpretation of a bold, colorful film look, I guess. I don't know. Don't focus too much on the words I use to describe it. If you like that look, I'm gonna show you how to do it in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. And the first thing you have to do is buy my LUTs because I used one of my LUTs to create that look. So go to my website, buy my LUTs. It's just 20 bucks, I'll wait. Nice, money, money, money. Everybody's gonna buy my LUTs now. Good job. <laughs> you really thought I was gonna make you buy my LUTs first? No, right? Of course not, look. You can actually use any LUT you want for this look, or no LUT at all even, because a lot of what makes this look is, well, part of it is color grading of course, but a lot of it comes from a built-in DaVinci Resolve effect. It's a bit of hype right now, but it does look really cool. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is, first of all, how with a few simple techniques and tools, you can make a LUT look like you want, because you know, using LUTs isn't bad. You just have to realize that a LUT is not magic. You always have to adjust some things to make it work with your footage. And I'm gonna keep it super simple, don't worry, but I'm not gonna hold your hand, okay? I'm gonna basically hand you the tools and then it's up to you. That's how you learn the most. Experiment, do it yourself, hands on, make mistakes also. And if it gets too much at some point, just go have a beer or a snack or whatever. Okay, and then there's something else you need to know. And I know I keep repeating myself, but that's because it's oh so important. Color grading starts when you're shooting the footage on location, light. That's what will make or break your color grade. Look, this shot for example, and this one. They both have the same color grade. Of course, I did some small adjustments for each shot separately, but 80, 90% is the same but they look very different. Same, but different. And that's simply because of the light. Shooting in the morning or at noon when the sun is high in the sky makes a huge difference. So always remember that. Photography, videography, it's all about light. Light is everything. Okay, and now we're ready to start grading. So fire up Resolve and let's do this. And the first thing we need to do, because I shot in S-Log3, is bring that flat looking S-Log3 footage into the Rec. 709 color space, so that it gets contrast and saturation. Basically so that it looks normal. And if you're not using log footage, so if you're using a standard profile on your camera, just skip this step. And if you're already lost now, well, I'll link a video in the description explaining more about log and color space transforms, because that's what I usually use. So color space transform, drop it on a node, and then input color space and gamma, of course depends on what camera you have and what profile you're using. Output gamma and color space, same as timeline, because in my project settings, I've set the timeline to Rec. 709. Okay, and as you can see, now we have normal looking footage. It has more contrast and more saturation. Then I'm gonna apply a LUT in a new node, but I'm gonna customize it a little bit because this LUT doesn't look exactly like I want it to look. I want it to look a bit more nostalgic and vintagey, you know? So let me show you a few simple tools and techniques that you can use to tweak and adjust a LUT. First of all, white balance and tint. I always start with those to get the balance right. And I always do it in a node before the color space transform. In this case, well, everything looks so blue, too blue, so let's make it a bit warmer. And I'm also gonna pull the tint slider a tad towards green to make it a little bit more gritty. But be careful here because, you know, you don't want it to look like this. Okay, and then contrast and exposure. In my opinion, one of the easiest ways to tweak the contrast and the exposure is in the curves. Let's pull up the shadows a little bit and bring down the highlights here to lower the contrast. But of course, you can do pretty much anything you want here. Want to pull up the midtones? Just make two anchor points and pull up the mids. See how it works? It's a really powerful tool. Just play around with it. What I'm also gonna do is pull down the brightest parts in the image, just a little bit, like this. Lock the shadows with another anchor point and then pull down here, just a tiny little bit. I think that looks okay. It's just to give a bit more contrast to those bright areas in the background. And then finally, let's tweak some colors. I want the blues to look more teal, not so warm and purple, I guess. And you can easily do that here. 
hue versus hue. So select the blues like that, and then just pull them down. See how they change, how the hue changes. Not too much, of course. Again, you don't want it to look like this. Subtle. And maybe let's also include some of the purples here. Yeah. And then also the orange tones here. I'm gonna pull them down to make them a bit more yellow, a bit more vintage. See, this is what we started with. And this is what we have now after doing some simple adjustments. Now, what you can also do is tone down a lot. Whenever you apply a LUT, if you go here to the key tab, with the LUT selected, of course, and then bring down the gain here. See? So you can put your LUT at 50%, for example. That can also help a lot to make a LUT look like you want it to look. And that's how you use LUTs. They're not magic, you have to make them work. Okay, and once you have the colors and the contrast how you want it, it's time to make it pop, make it colorful and bold and saturated. That's what we're looking for here. And the effect I'm gonna use, which is not available in the free version, I'm sorry guys, the effect is halation. And it's a really cool effect, but you have to be careful, and I'll show you why. Also, the result of the halation effect heavily depends on the light in your image. It always looks a little bit different, depending on the light. So, another node with the halation effect, and right away you can see the difference, right? It pops more, it's more saturated, it glows. It gets a film-like look. Now, you could of course leave it like this, but let me show you what settings I like to adjust. So, Threshold controls the point where halation will begin to be added to the highlights. Because the main thing that halation does is it makes the highlights glow. And so it depends on the highlights in your shot. All the way up is no glow and all the way down is max glow. But I just want a little bit more. Like that. And then normalization, I think it's similar to a feather function. See, you can make it harsh or very smooth. I want it just a tad harsher than the smoothest. There. And then film saturation level, well, yeah, the saturation of the glowy parts. Again, not all the way, it looks horrible, just a little bit more. And this is where you have to be careful, because look, all the colors in your image have different saturation levels, right? And let's say, for example, that you want to increase the saturation of the entire image. Well, that might look okay for most of the colors, but for some colors that were already highly saturated, it might be too much. But there's an easy way to check it and to manipulate it. If you go here to Vector Scope, and then here Vector Scope Scale Style, turn on 75 and 100% targets. And then you see these boxes? The inner boxes are essentially the safe saturation limit for broadcast TV. And as you can see, the colors are very saturated, but I'm still well within the limits. And the 100% limit is the limit for the sRGB color space. So theoretically, you could go to 100% saturation if you make videos for YouTube, for web. I wouldn't recommend it because your audience will need sunglasses, you know? But yeah, so I always try to stay within 75%. And that's for some colors. Colors that are already very saturated can go to the limit. But you don't want everything at 75%. Here, for example, you can see the red line on the ship. The sun hits it, so it's the most saturated color in the image. And if I increase the film saturation here, it will saturate more colors than just red. But red is the one that will reach the limit first. Technically, this is still okay. But for me, a bit too much. I hope I explained it correctly because I'm not a professional colorist, you know? So feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong here. Okay, but what if, let's say, you apply the halation effect and one of the colors is over the limit without adjusting any of the halation settings. So for example, reds are over the limit, but you like the way all the other colors look. Well, then you can, for example, here in hue versus saturation, bring down the saturation of the reds manually. There you go, see how they go down here? There are other methods. You can use the color warper, for example. Just look for a tutorial on the color warper. You can also use it to bring down saturation of specific colors. And then the halation effect itself has a bunch more settings that you can adjust to get really, really cool results. 
but the only other setting that I adjusted was detail loss. And it removes just a little bit of the detail in the highlights to get rid of that digitally sharp look. You know what I mean? And then finally, once you're done with the halation effect, film grain. Film grain will elevate your halation effect to the next level. It really needs it. And I made a video on how I do my film grain a few days ago. I'll link it in the description. And well, yeah. That's basically it then. It was a lot, but not super complicated, I hope. A lot can still be simple, right? Anyway, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Salut.